a meltdown over Throne Doe, getting memed and being forever linked with Shrek. Many things have changed since the early 2000s, but when it comes to Smash Mouth, they're infamous. So, where have they been? Ask the average person what they believe Smash Mouth's biggest claim to fame is, and most will say it's their song All Star, which unforgettably appeared on the soundtrack of 2001's Shrek. While there's no disputing that the adventures of the famous Green Ogre and his fairy tale friends helped the band reach a wider audience, All Star had already been a smash single hitting number one on the Billboard Mainstream Top 40 in 1999. DreamWorks noticed this, but according to The Ringer, the animation studio had other designs for the music for Shrek. In the production process for the film, DreamWorks used All Star as a temporary track for the film's opening scene. However, the team felt the song had been everywhere in the years prior and feared it would be overkill to use it in the movie. The solution was to ask one of DreamWorks' signed artists, Matt Mahaffey, to record a track that had a similar vibe to All Star and could work for the film's tone. After teaming up with producer Eric Valentine, who actually produced All Star, Mahaffey believed he had cracked the code and delivered a hit. However, this all changed when a cut was shown to DreamWorks Animation's then-CEO Jeffrey Katzenberg. Reportedly, Katzenberg asked why All Star wasn't used instead. The rest, as they say, is history. It's been a great help for our career, and it's a wonderful movie and a good thing to be associated with. Thanks to the popularity of Shrek, All Star continued to roll on, becoming the earworm that never goes away and everyone knows the words to. It also appeared as if Smash Mouth was achieving some real momentum since 1999's Astro Lounge and their 2001 self-titled album peaked at numbers 6 and 48 on the Billboard 200 chart, respectively. Naturally, the expectation was that their follow-up album would continue to build upon the earlier success, perhaps even debut in the coveted number one spot atop the chart. Unfortunately, 2003's Get the Picture failed to ignite the charts or even catch the public's attention. The album performed worse than previous efforts, peaking at number 100 on the Billboard 200 while also lacking a strong radio-friendly track in the same vein as All Star, or even Walkin' on the Sun. Arguably, the album's biggest single was Hang On, which was featured in the perhaps even more forgettable 2003 film The Cat in the Hat. Ultimately, Get the Picture proved to be Smash Mouth's final album for Interscope Records. Like many bands before and after them, Smash Mouth has experienced its fair share of people coming and going with bassist Paul Delisle as the sole founding member still in the band. However, the group was relatively stable from the late 90s to the mid-2000s, until drummer Michael Urbano and guitarist Greg Camp departed. Urbano left the band in 2006. Speaking to Rolling Stone about his decision to leave when he did, he said, Things were spinning out of control. I think that there were just differences of opinion about what we should do and what direction we should take. It was time for me to go. Camp parted ways with Smash Mouth in 2008, and according to the guitarist's comments to the Mercury News at the time, trouble had been brewing and he wasn't getting along with another bandmate saying, It was just one of those things where either me or one of the other people in the band had to leave, and if that person left, then that band wouldn't be together anymore. Both Urbano and Camp did return to play with Smash Mouth in the later years, following their departure. In the world of rock and roll, there are numerous bands and musicians who have serious beef with each other. Weirdly enough, Smash Mouth and Third Eye Blind also had some tension between them, but the reason for their animosity doesn't seem too clear or obvious. At 2014's Bottle Rock Napa Valley, Smash Mouth's then lead singer Steve Harwell took a shot at Third Eye Blind during the band's performance. Spin reported from fan accounts of the event that Harwell took to the stage and said, Third Eye Blind can suck my d it wasn't the first time the singer had derogatory things to say about Third Eye Blind or their singer, Stephen Jenkins, having called him names in previous interviews. However, Smash Mouth's manager, Robert Hayes, denied there were any real issues between the bands. He told the Washington Post that it's all harmless banter between professionals saying, Steve Harwell pretty much has a long history of poking fun at Stephen Jenkins. There's no true bad blood there. They've toured and done shows together for quite a while. Performing live isn't for the faint-hearted or those quick to anger. Having been around the block, one would expect Smash Mouth to be adept at dealing with hecklers and hurlers in the crowd. Yet, according to TMZ, vocalist Steve Harwell wasn't seeing the funny side of the audience throwing food at him during a 2015 performance. 
appearing at a Colorado food festival. Harwell was left unimpressed when a crowd chucked slices of bread at him while he sang on stage. Video footage of the event showed Harwell cursing and threatening physical violence against the audience members for their actions. At one point, he wandered out into the crowd and looked like he was ready for a showdown with anyone who would step up before a security guard intervened. Harwell seemingly calmed down and returned to the stage to finish up the set, with no more doughy interruptions getting in the way. While Smash Mouth's All-Star was the anthem of the late 90s and early 2000s, the song also received a resurgence in popularity in the late 2010s. The fad stemmed from content creators who decided to create their own inventive remixes of the song and post them on the internet. According to The Daily Dot, some creators sang the unmistakable lyrics of All-Star over the music of other songs, such as Adele's somber tearjerker, Hello. While some musicians may take offense to becoming a meme, Smash Mouth embraced it. Speaking to The Daily Dot, Steve Harwell said, Our standard answer is, hey, we invented the meme. In a separate discussion with Rolling Stone, guitarist Greg Camp admitted it's humorous to see all the memes and songs created, and that Smash Mouth is okay with it. Interestingly, he revealed that from a technical perspective, All Star is actually ideal for remixes and mashups because of its specific key, tempo, and melody. In June 2019, Rolling Stone put together a retrospective piece about Smash Mouth that looked at the band 20 years after the release of All Star. The expansive article interviewed various members of the band as well as some of the key players in the group's history. While everyone agreed All Star was the song that changed everything for the band, Guitarist Greg Camp also put matters into perspective by talking about the flip side of the song's unparalleled success, saying, It's bittersweet. Once you do something like that, everyone expects you to keep on doing it. Your bandmates, your managers, your record label, everyone's just like, yeah, just do that again. Just write another one of those. Camp explained how there were various factors that contributed to the overwhelmingly popularity and success of All Star. And it wasn't as easy to replicate it as some people might imagine. In a way, it was like Smash Mouth had captured lightning in a bottle by being at the right place at the right time. While the song catapulted them into the sphere of popular culture, it also loomed over them, and nothing they ever did from then on could top it. Social media doesn't have many rules, but there is one law everyone must abide by. Thou shall not slander Taylor Swift. What is she, a singer? She's much more than a singer, Chris. She's... she's... she's the queen! A goddess! Yahoo reported that Smash Mouth learned this the hard way after posting a now-deleted tweet where they referred to Swift's 2020 album Folklore as, quote, bore lore. Whether they were being serious or horsing around was irrelevant, since the internet took notice of the transgression and instantly reacted. The self-proclaimed Swifties, in particular, were having none of it and took to social media to let Smash Mouth know what they thought of their comment in music. One person who made his feelings very clear was Teen Wolf star Dylan O'Brien, tweeting simply, F Smash Mouth. The backlash towards the band was intense and unrelenting, as fans weren't about to let them get away with their one-word review of Swift's new album. In the end, Smash Mouth deleted the tweet, which was probably the wisest thing to do. In 2020, the coronavirus pandemic brought the world to a standstill. The world shut down as everyone tried to contain the spread of the virus. One of the industries that was most affected by the collective shutdown was live entertainment. Many groups couldn't hit the road or perform to a wide audience, since the threat that COVID-19 would spread among people in close spaces was too great. When live music slowly started to return, there were regulations put in place to control the number of people allowed in a venue, mandate the use of masks, and keep social distance between concert goers. Unfortunately, Smash Mouth decided to ignore these guidelines and found themselves embroiled in controversy when one of its concerts was identified as a super spreader event by The Independent. This is their concert on Sunday in South Dakota, a large, mostly maskless crowd gathering there near the stage. Reportedly, more than 100 people tested positive after attending the August 2020 concert. According to the report, Steve Harwell took the opportunity to tell the crowd that COVID Smash Mouth without vocalist Steve Harwell is like cereal without milk. It just feels unnatural. However, in 2021, fans had to make peace with the fact that Harwell decided to call it quits. According to TMZ, Harwell announced his departure from Smash Mouth saying, To our loyal and amazing fans, thank you. All of this was possible because of you. 
I've tried so hard to power through my physical and mental health issues and to play in front of you one last time, but I just wasn't able to. According to TMZ sources, the singer's health had rapidly deteriorated over the years, with Harwell experiencing numerous issues that impacted both his everyday life and performance levels. Steve's had a lot of medical problems. You know, he has um, cardiomyopathy and heart problems. So, you know, he retired. After the infamous Smash Mouth show at the Big Sip made headlines for all the wrong reasons, namely because of Harwell's eccentric behavior during the set after being pelted by pastry, the decision was made to call it a day. Harwell's representatives told the New York Post that the singer was disappointed to have had to make the decision, but there was no other way he could continue due to his health issues. While many bands have forged ahead with new lead singers, there was a question mark surrounding Smash Mouth after Steve Harwell's departure. Unquestionably, a large part of the band's success was due to his instantly recognizable voice and tone. Would another vocalist be able to pick up the mic and belt out the band's hits in the same way as Harwell? Chatting to Odyssey's Kevin Kenny, bassist Paul Delisle explained how Smash Mouth had known about Harwell's health issues for a while, so they were prepared when the inevitable happened. The band had long decided they wanted to carry on, so they put out a call for a new singer, and Zach Goody stepped up. Goody explained how he decided to email the band out of the blue, thinking they would never respond to his message. When they did, the conversation started between the different parties. Shortly after announcing Goody as the new singer, Smash Mouth unveiled a brand new single. It wasn't an original number that showed off Goody's versatility or the direction the band's songwriting would take moving forward, though. Instead, it was a cover of Rick Astley's troll-worthy smash hit, Never Gonna Give You Up. <laughs> 